wants to take you deeper than the challenges that are in your life. So you understand exactly why Jesus is in you and why you are in Christ. Welcome to a dynamic and life transforming program impacting generations with the Word of God. Christ has been made our wisdom. He's Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. He's not just the power without the wisdom. And it cannot be complete to be wisdom without the power. Because the wisdom of God evokes the power of God on your life. Here is Venero Make Manners with Apostle Grace Lubelli. I'm so excited for the sermon tonight. Very, very, very excited. And this is how I want to begin. Uh, today, I want to engage in a conversation of a thing that I've seen common under the sun. Uh, among the sons of men. Uh, that sometimes in this walk of life, as we do life, we aspire, we dream, and perspire. We apply ourselves um, to ideas and ideals, inventions and innovations. We expand and build, we occupy and, and build tents. We set ourselves to the progress of ourselves as individuals in every aspect of life. Uh, that is why you go to school for an education because you want to be a better human being in future. That is why you apply yourself to a job because you want to be uh, independent or interdependent. And that is why you apply yourself to principles like hard work, diligence, you know, commitment, uh, you know, responsibility, professionalism, and all these kinds of things. And, and we do all that. And uh, sometimes... Of course, I've taught about windows and doors. If you have a sermon on that, you'll go and read. And, 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 and the realm of opportunity is in the realm of doors, right? And, and because we've positioned ourselves in these things, we start to believe God for certain opportunities to come our way to uh, provide for the preparations that we have had for years, for months, or since we were children. And, and, and we are there in, in our relationships, in our careers, in our ministrations, in whatever aspect there is, in our dreams and visions. And so sometimes we experience in this life uh, doors closing on us. Some, sometimes doors close on us. The realm of opportunity sometimes is frustrated on our lives. And sometimes you, uh, I'm talking to a, about a person, for example, who uh, studied hard, went for an interview, and you've been believing God for three, four years for a job. And then you sit for that interview, lo and behold, that job fails. And then you probably apply for another. And then you fail to go through. And then you probably apply for another and fail to get you, you then, And then you fail to get through. And then you get into this perpetual thought. Maybe there's something disturbing me. Why is this door closing? Why are these doors not opening to me? And, um, you know, it's in different aspects. Some of you have had relationships you come out of one relationship, you die and work, you enter another relationship, you die and work, you enter another relationship, you die and work. And then you start saying, what's wrong with me? Why are these things repeating? You know, some of you are ministers, but every year you have registered losses or financially you have registered, uh, you know, a reduction in your memberships and all these kinds of things. And you start to see certain things, certain doors are closing on you and things around you are starting to die. And then, and then you start to pray, you start to fast and start to do all, all these kinds of things. And I've come to realization that not all doors that close on you are because of the devil. Not all the things that are denied you spiritually are the working of Satan. Of course, the Christian wants to reconcile. Then how am I reconciling things uh, such as whatsoever you shall ask in my name, it shall be given, you know. How do I reconcile that? But Jesus said I should ask for anything. Yes, it's true. That is true according to the divine and sovereign plan of God. But yet, I have prayed about this and it did not come. Of course, some doors close because of rebellion. The Bible says somewhere in Job how they shall obey the precepts and the commandments of God and they shall be prosperous, you know, and it shall give them uh, greatness and peace and provision. Some doors close because of rebellion. Some doors close because it's just not their time. But not all doors close because of the devil. Tonight, I want to talk about the doors that close on you because of divine purpose. Intended by God. Intended by God. Intended by God. 
Those are the ones I want to talk about today. Those are the ones I want to address tonight in tonight's service. I want to explain to you some of those things that might lock up, close up for you, but they're intended. And you must mark this as well. Not all closed doors are locked. And that is why we sometimes prefer to go a bit deep to elucidate the mystery of keys. He tells Peter, behold, I give you keys. Whatsoever you shall bind on the earth, it shall be bound in the heaven. Whatsoever you shall loosen on the earth, it shall be loosened in the heavens. The spiritual keys. In other words, there are keys to all doors. And some doors, again I said, could be closed, but they might not be locked. Or some doors could be closed, but you have the keys to them. So when, when God is talking to Peter about being given keys of the kingdom, he was given access to specific doors. He says, whatsoever you shall bind on the earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loosen on the earth, it shall, it shall be loosened in heaven. Those are keys. And those keys are for specific doors. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, tonight I want to talk about those doors that are deliberately closed. And you'll ask, what is this specific thing about the doors that are deliberately closed by God, not the devil? Now, there, there is a law to the mystery of doors. There are specific laws to the mystery of doors. Like one of which I explained that every door has its own key. That, that's, that, that's, a mystery, that, that's a law concerning the mystery of doors. If I had time, I'd probably teach. There are about seven of them. Now, one of which, most importantly, that I want to give emphasis on tonight is there are certain doors that would close on you or stay closed on you because they feel that you don't fit in them and they respect bigger doors which they see are open to you but your eyes are not open to them. I'm going to say it again. Some doors are not closed on you because the devil has intervened in your work and craft. Some doors are closed on you because they behold bigger doors that are open to you. And one of the fundamental laws of the mystery of doors, a smaller door cannot open when it sees a bigger door open to you. Because you see, the path of the just according to God shines brighter and brighter and to a perfect day. God has not propelled the laws of the kingdom to provide for a lesser light when a greater light has been set before you. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so sometimes our eyes are so blind from the bigger doors that are open to us that we stay knocking and fighting with these smaller doors and even praying and seeking counseling, going to our men of God, our prophets and apostles, our teachers and evangelists to speak a word so particular doors could open to, to us. And yet God is saying, when a lesser door sees a greater door, it cannot open because it respects greatness. God honors greatness. It's from one level of glory to the next level of glory. We grow from faith to faith. God has not intended that you would go back into grace. No. The step you give in the spirit for your progress and prosperity, God intends to take you to the next level of glory. So that's one of the fundamentals. This is the one I want to emphasize something on. I'll read you a story in Genesis 40, the 40th chapter. It's a long one, but it's important for you to understand this. A story is given the wonderful man of God called Joseph. You know the story, how that he was favored, you know, by his father. And then his brethren became very jealous. And in becoming jealous, you know, one day he had taken them something to eat. And before we know that, they tear him, his clothes apart and all these kinds of things, throw him in a ditch, transact him over and sell him. And when they sell uh, this fellow, all through we see the story of how he goes into Potiphar's house and then Potiphar's wife, puts a story on him, we know that, and that he was trying to abuse her sexually, and then before we know that, he's thrown into prison. Now, the 40th chapter of Genesis begins when the fellow is in prison. And the Bible says it comes to pass that during that time, the chief, the head, uh, or, or the chief butler, and, and the chief baker of the king of Egypt offended Pharaoh. They annoyed him. They did something that annoyed him. And the story is given that because Pharaoh was wroth against the two of his officers, uh, he says, 
he put them in ward of the house of the captain of the guard into the prison and the place where Joseph was bound. So the chief butler and the chief baker are arrested because they've annoyed the king. And coincidentally, these people are thrown into prison where uh, Joseph is. And the captain of the guard charges Joseph that Joseph should serve these fellows and continue with them inward for a season. And so these two gentlemen, one day wake up and they both had a dream, a similar dream, in a way. It was similar in a way, uh, but different also in a way. And so what happens? So they're all sad in the morning because they carry no interpretation of this dream. And in the morning when uh, J uh, Joseph comes to serve them, uh, he beholds that they were sad. And then he says, what's wrong with you? What ails thee? What's troubling your hearts? And uh, the Bible says, they said unto him, we've dreamed a dream and there's no interpreter of it. So Joseph tells them, you know, all interpretation belongs to God. Come on, tell me, I pray thee, so I will interpret these dreams for you. And so the chief butler uh, begins with his dream. He says, I had a dream uh, and in a dream, uh, there was a vine with three branches. And it was as though it was budded and her blossoms shot forth and the cluster thereof brought forth uh, ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes, pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said, this is the interpretation. Three branches are three days and yet within three days, Pharaoh shall lift you up, uh, shall lift up your head and restore you into your place. Pharaoh is going to restore you into your position and after that, you shall follow through the former manner where you are as a butler. And so, but after that, after that, he, Joseph beholds a door. He beholds a door. Because he sees that this fellow in three, uh, three days is going to be restored to his place as a butler, uh, as a cup bearer for the king. So he says, uh-huh. But when you reach the king in the 14th verse, Think of me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And he says, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me in this dungeon. I'm innocent. I was taken by my brothers. I'm an innocent guy. I don't even know how I landed here. So now that I've prayed for you, interpreted this dream for you, kindly when you get to Pharaoh and you're restored as you know, the, the, the chief butler kindly give a word for me to the Pharaoh. And now when the chief baker sees that the interpretation was good, he also tells his story. He says, my dream, I saw three white baskets on my head and in the uppermost basket, there was all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh and um, the birds did eat them out of the basket and to my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. And he tells them, in three days, Pharaoh shall lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the bird shall eat thy flesh. And it came to pass indeed on the 20th verse that as it was Pharaoh's birthday and he made a feast of all his servants. He lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants. And the Bible says, and he restored the chief butler and to his butlership Again, again, and he gave the cup into uh, Pharaoh's hand. But he hung the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted it to them. That verse 23. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. He forgot him. This fellow has had an interpretation of dream, but he forgot him. And you see, before I even speak to all of us, let me speak to ministers. Because some of you are angry because of those who forgot you. Those who you helped when they were still poor and when they got money, they no longer call you. Those who you served and loved and later on they blackmailed you. Those with whom you carried friendships with and at one particular point some got on your head and they betrayed you. They maligned you. They spoke evil about you. They slandered you. And then your heart, how could this brother do this to me? How could she do this to me? We were friends, we were fellow ministers. She was my child. I raised her since she was little. And now she has betrayed me. You're not the first one. The only challenge is that 
you looked at them as the only door. And so without them, you don't see any other. Or that they owed you that, that sense of entitlement that makes you think that people are meant to repay you for the love that you give them. Nuh uh. That's not how it works. Not everybody's going to repay you, not everybody's going to appreciate your labors in the Lord. And so you have to be delivered from people. I have a sermon on that. It's called Be Delivered from People. Every minister should listen to that. But now let's get back to the story. This fellow has been saved. He knows that there's a dream interpreter in the prisons and he forgot him. How long? If you go in the 41st verse, he forgot Joseph for two years. A door closed on Joseph for two years and Joseph served another two full years. And listen to the irony and humor of God and Pharaoh dreamed. <laughs> Glory to God. And Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. Look at the mystery of this. The door, that, the earlier door, of, if that door had come two years before, that would have frustrated the destiny of Joseph. And I'll tell you why. Because if the butler had gone to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh heard the story of Joseph, and Pharaoh ordered the release of Joseph, it means Joseph would leave Egypt and start to pursue his father. And by the time, two years later, when Pharaoh dreams the dream that should change the destiny, not only of Egypt, but the posterity of Joseph as we know it, Joseph would not be in Egypt to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. You see that? So, we see the delay of two years in prison because the door of the butler that came two years earlier respected the door that should come two years later. And that door that had to open when the right person has to dream and he has to look for the right interpretation. So Pharaoh wakes up in the night. He sees seven fattened calf, uh, cattle out of a river. And then he sees the slim and, 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 and lean uh, 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 fleshed. And uh, seven of them as well, they come out of the river. And the small ones swallow the big ones. And then he goes back to sleep again. And then he dreams corn. Seven corns on one, on, 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 on one branch, on, 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 uh, on one stalk and rank that were good. And then seven that were not good. And then the, the, the weak ones and the eaten ones and the dilapidated ones ate and consumed the bigger ones. And then he starts to look for interpretations. We all know the end of that story. The end of that story is no magician, no sorcerer, no individual who claimed to have access to the spirit realm could access the, the dream and its interpretation. God had anointed a man and made ready. Because the, you see, God had anointed an individual and set aside an individual. So these two years that you think are for delay, you would have gone back yourself uh, as Joseph to your father and found him. But guess what? He stays for two years. And he stays at the opportune moment for the bigger door to open. And when the bigger door opens, the scriptures tells us that Joseph became the governor of Egypt. We saw a very unique anointing. We saw the anointing of, of, of wealth. We saw the anointing of creating wealth. We saw the anointing of administration. We saw the anointing of collecting and building, of establishing and, and maintaining nations and sustaining nations. That's the Joseph anointing. That's why I have a conference every year called Joseph Jean. To help us understand how to function in the economy of the kingdom. Now, the story is very clear. When the famine hits later, you, you, I mean, he's, he's appointed as governor and then he stores up seven years of, of plenty because he was interpreted seven years of plenty and seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty will provide for the seven, year, seven, seven years of famine. And so we see uh, when he uh, becomes governor and the seven years of plenty comes through, he stores enough. We get into the seven years of famine, and guess what? When the famine hit, the scriptures are clear, the famine did not hit Egypt only. Famine hit the whole world. And that is why we see the brothers of Joseph coming all the way to Egypt to look for food. What if the butler had spoken to Pharaoh and Joseph, the one who should interpret the dream, was with his father in Israel? That means that we were, the whole world was going to die of famine because there was not going to be an interpreter at that particular point to, in, to interpret the dream that was given. 
So we see God with his infinite wisdom refusing a certain door to open because a greater door had to open. And indeed when the brethren come in, we see that not only did the glory of Joseph, uh, uh, was it revealed in the time of, 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 of Egypt during that, that dispensation, but also the scriptures are very clear that the whole household of Joseph was favored because he tells his brothers, Weep not and cast not yourself, for the Lord hath sent me ahead of you for the preservation of your posterity. That is God. That's a typical example of a man who God preserved and locked a door for two years because this smaller door saw a greater door. And let me tell you something. When you're positioned in the will and way of God, the right person dreams one day. The person for your elevation dreams one day. But you see, sometimes we don't know how the process works. Because sometimes when certain doors close on us quickly, we, we tend to judge God harshly and become indifferent to the way and the working of the Spirit. What the natural eye could not see was that the only way Joseph's dream would be interpreted was through interpreting other men's dreams. Remember, the butler yet later two years becomes beneficial because he's the guy who comes through when nobody can interpret it. And he says, you know what, king? There's a fellow I know. I remember now my fault that there was a guy I was supposed to speak to you about. I found that guy in prison and everything he spoke concerning the interpretation of my dream came to pass. He still stayed available. God still positioned that butler for that purpose. But you see, Joseph had to interpret first the dream of a butler before his own was interpreted. Joseph had to interpret the dream of Pharaoh before his was interpreted. I tell people, instead of investing more time in interpreting your dream, invest time in interpreting the dreams of men. One day, God will position you in a space that interprets the dream of those that really matter and have the grace and glory to promote you. The gospel was not meant to be a selfish ministry. It was meant to be the kind of ministry that gives and gives and gives of the self. But you see, we have many Christians who are so selfish. Every time they're in the presence of God, they want to take, they want to take, they want to take, they want to take, and they want to take. But how long will you take without giving? And what am I saying about this giving? It's more than just bread and water. It's more than money and anything else. It's about firstly giving yourself to God. Giving yourself to God. He speaks of the church in Macedonia. And how the Bible says that they went beyond. And how the Bible says they first gave them own selves to the Lord. And unto us by the will of God. This they did beyond how far the apostles could hope and expect. That's the way of the spirit. And that is why if I get an opportunity soon, I'll teach something about the consummations. I'll teach something about the consecrations. The degrees of consecration. Because you need to know how to consecrate yourself to God. Body, soul and spirit. Because that will affect your health in your body. It will affect the state of your emotional uh, positioning in your soul. And it will define uh, the precision of your spirit. It will define the power and authority with which you operate in the spirit realm. Many people don't understand that kind of consecration. And they consecrate themselves to the things that are of the flesh and of this world that, rather than God. And they in themselves, some of the things we consecrate ourselves to are not necessarily evil. But they switch the priority, the true priority of the spirit. And the things that are supposed to come first in the spirit come secondary. And the things that are supposed to come secondary in the spirit come first. The story is given a man called Asa. He became sick and he could not consult the Lord. But he invested himself into seeking help from men of the flesh. And yet this is a man who had sought God before and God had worked through him. That's a man who has not yet consecrated fully to understand what it means to give yourself wholly and fully to God, to walk in the perfection of the power of God concerning your health. I'll teach about that someday. I'll teach about that someday. But we live to the interpretation of the dreams of others. And as we do, our dreams are interpreted. Our dreams are interpreted. That's just the way of the Spirit. Hallelujah, praise God. Now back to what I was trying to, exp to, to express here. That 
certain doors, certain things will come in our way, in our path. And they seem like they, they want to frustrate and kill what's available. And yet the will of God intends to carry you to greater doors. In the time of Moses, somehow, this king felt that he wanted to kill all the male children of the Jews. Remember the story very well. And all the children were killed during that time. And remember the story of how Moses is let down on a basket to float on water. As one door was closing from his family, God was opening a bigger door. And we see the same Moses be raised in the kingdom as a son of Pharaoh. He was raised in the wisdom and traditions of the Egyptian. Because one day, God was going to send him back to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel from bondage. That is the God. It seemed like one door was closing up on this infant. But a greater door of responsibility. And God even has a way of placing you in the place where your enemy least expects you. Can you believe that Moses fed on the food of the enemy? Of Israel? Can you believe that he closed the clothes of the enemy of Israel? Can you believe that he was raised in the very kingdom with which God was going to show his power through the same hand? How amazing God can be. God can even use the thing that has set itself against you and create a door there. Oh, you sing the song, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. There seemed to be no way in the house of Pharaoh. Death came from Pharaoh into the Jew. And God gets a boy and gives him life in the very space where the voice commanded death. That is the God we're talking about. Doors can open for you anywhere. As long as you are in the will and purposes of God. In the book of Revelation, he says, behold, I, 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 I place a door before you. I have opened the door before you that no man can shut. What I'm trying to say is that when God opens something, no man can shut it. 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 The door which is opened by God. That's one of the, the laws of the mysteries of the doors of the spirit. If God opens a door, no man can shut it. No man can shut it. No man can shut it. Hallelujah, praise God. No man can shut it. In the New Testament, in John, the 20th chapter, from about the 19th verse, we know the story of Jesus Christ and how he lives and he's crucified on the cross and he's buried. And during that time, of course, it comes to the minds of the disciples that their hero, their king, their master has gone. You can imagine the man for whom they left for all their wealth, the man for whom they left for all their visions, the man for whom they left for their families, their friends, and chose to follow him. They saw miracles, they saw wonders, they saw signs, they were elated, they were elevated into the realm of the kingdom. Their eyes started to see the possibilities of human life that had never been seen before in the history of human existence. And here we are, that very son of God, by the hands of carnal men, whom they call the son of God, whom they know as the king of kings, in whom they know his life, is crucified on the cross and he dies. It was not an easy experience for them. Of course, after the death of Jesus Christ, we expected that there was some sort of uproar of the people who are going to follow through with everyone that followed the master. So in the 19th verse, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, the Bible says that doors were shut. Hello? We're talking about the doors that shut. Underline that. The doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews. And the Bible says, and then came Jesus. And he stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. I don't know whether you can, or you can picture that. They know the fellow is gone. And then before you know that, at the fear of the Jews that are going to kill you, the doors are shut. You have no access to live in the very world that you've been walking every day as princes and princesses. 
as aids to the master who goes about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. As a man who walked the streets and multitudes thronged at him. As a man who just a few days ago was on a donkey, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And the next thing we know, the very place where you had the liberties and freedom to walk through, as the Jews had hope during that time that he was the, the, the king, he was going to be uh, the king to oust the Roman rule. We, we see the guy skilled by the very Jews. And I want you to imagine that kind of space. Now, the doors are shut. The spaces of their liberties are shut. The spaces of their positionings are shut. The places where they won favor and everywhere they walked, I, th I even imagine certain people would come to Peter and say, you know what, talk to the master. I need to meet him. I know that you know him and you guys are close. I think these guys had even earned a certain right and space of favor before the people because they were close to the master. And the next day, the doors of men and the spaces that have favored you have shut you out. And the Bible says, Jesus comes in the midst of these people. And then it tells them, peace be unto you. Know ye not that the Bible says, he says actually, Jesus himself, he says, I am the door. <laughs> Glory to God. He says, I am the door. Now, as the doors are shut out from without because they fear that the Jews might attack them and destroy him, the door appeared before them. John chapter 9, uh, chapter 10, verses 9. He says, I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, see, the, 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 the door of men, the door of the favors and love that they were receiving from the world was shut, and the door comes in the midst of them and tells them, Peace be unto you. Glory to God. And he continues to say, And when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and and his side, and that there were dis the disciples, the Bible says, were glad. And the Bible says, and when, and then say Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you. This is another door speaking. And as my father hath sent me, these are men in, oh, these are men in trouble who have shut themselves out from the world. A door, a certain door has been shut on them because their leader has been killed so brutally and shamefully. And now the door, the real door now comes in the midst of them and tells them peace unto you. And when he tells them peace unto you, we think he's going to tell them, I'm going to protect you from those fellows. They think he's going to tell them, don't worry, let's go out and face them. They think he's going to walk out with them and do more miracles as, as, as he's been doing. And they're going to show these fellows that you see, the guy is not dead. Uh-uh. He changes the, 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 the narrative. He changes the story to the least expected narrative. He tells them that as my father had sent me, even so send I you. What a do. Oh, oh, oh. How did the father send Jesus? He sent him with power. He's saying, I'm sending you with the very power the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very authority the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very wisdom the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very glory the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very atmosphere the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very vision the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very anointing the father sent me. I'm sending you with the very glory the father sent me. And the Bible says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And now we imagine that they've killed one man and he has released an anointing on multitudes and they are going to be sent out as he was sent out. What a door. These ones had to shut for them to get access to the real door. This was a door for the church. Oh, glory to God. And then they start to go out in that power. They start to go out in that authority. They go healing the sick. They go casting out devils. They go cleansing the, 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 those that were with leprosy. They go doing everything that the man was doing. Now a bigger problem has come in the church. We were fighting one man and now we find fellows who are exactly like him. And the Bible says, and they were called Christians. Why? Because they were like the fellow that they had killed. What a glory. That is the God when you start to kill, he starts to increase it. 
That is the God who wants to multiply every pain you've gone through. That is the God who wants to multiply every suffering you've gone through for peace, for joy, for victory and tranquility. The Bible says in Romans 10, 11, if you read from the Amplified, the scripture says, no man who believes in him shall be put to shame. He doesn't shame us. Yeah, some of you think that because they chucked you, you are ashamed. No. Watch, woman of God, what God is going to do. Oh, you think that because that woman left you, that's the end of your story. Uh-uh. That's, that's not the God you believed. Oh, at least she doesn't know that she left a man of God. Let me tell you. He said exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask or think. That's the door he has prepared. In fact, the Amplified says it's beyond our highest prayers, our highest dreams, our highest desires, our thoughts, our hopes. If you say that you're a dreamer, God can do beyond your biggest dream. If you say that you have hope, God can do exceedingly abundantly what you think you can hope. He says it's beyond your thoughts. Think, think, think. And then you say, I want to be the, I think I'm the richest man in the world. And God says, I can actually do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask or think. Okay, I desire to be the most successful minister in the world. And he says, uh uh, that's even smaller. I can give you a success that you have no definition for. I can give you a membership that you cannot count. I can give you wealth that you can never run. He said that he will never put you to shame. And the world did not know what the church received. The man died with 12 major disciples. A couple of thousands that came for food. But the major were just 12. And he took time to amass them. And he breathes on them and they receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he received the Holy Ghost. And later we see in the upper room the, what the power of the Holy Spirit can do. Peter came out of that building one day and 3,000 men got saved in less than 30 minutes of his speech. Now something crazy had come into the church. Why? Because after Peter had preached, the Bible says, they asked him, what will you want us to do? Imagine a Roman centurion is standing there and is hearing one guy after speaking for 30 minutes is being asked, what will you want us to do? What if the guy say, turn to every Roman guy and kill him? Now, what seemed was like a confused bunch started to become the most dreadful and threatening movement in human existence. Oh yes, they were beaten. Oh yes, they were burned. Oh yes, they were killed. But the more they were afflicted, the more they increased. The more doors are closed on the church, the more will open. The more will open. See, yeah, 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 we've heard some of you have been, oh, when will they open the churches, the places of worship? Or they've closed them. Wait when they open them. Wait when they open places of worship. We are going to preach the gospel like we have never preached it before. Some people see doors that are shutting. Some of us are already looking at what's going to open up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Of course, in COVID, our viewership has been increasing every day. On YouTube, on Facebook, on Spirit TV and everywhere. Why? Because even though you close places of worship, the church of Jesus Christ is not closed. And all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Yes, the message is still being preached. And that is why I have not opened. How could you tell me that I opened for 200 members? I don't have 200 members. I even feel sorry for the man who recognizes that he has 200 only when he believes God for millions. Believe God for some bigger. Believe God for some bigger in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God told us to occupy until he comes. There's nothing wrong in preaching the gospel. He sent us to preach the gospel to the whole world. And that is why we are praying every day that when they open these places of worship, may our places of worship explode with people in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that your ministry is going to increase this season more than it has ever been before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because you were not called for small things. 
you are called for big things. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, persecution began in the church. And certain doors again started to close up. But as these doors were closing up, God was still working out a wonder that is bigger than what humanity could express in that time. And look now, 2,000 and more years later, after all those men that died, after all those men that were burned, in, were burned to stake, after those missionaries that died in spaces where white man could not leave, after mothers were separated from their own children, after some were shot, after some were sewn in tutu, some were burned, after temples were broken, physical places of worship were broken, after empires were broken, more than 2,000 years later, Christianity is still the most dominant faith in the world. And the Bible is the most printed book since the date was first printed every year of human existence. Even in the time where we have electronic devices, they're still printing Bibles. And men are still buying them. You know why? Because the mystery of doors, when it comes to the kingdom, when God has opened a door, no man can shut it. And whether you want it or not, a great and effectual door has been opened unto you. Glory to God. Yeah, there are many adversaries, but the door is open. Who opened it? God. It doesn't matter how many things set themselves against you. Is it God who has opened it? Yes, it does not matter what they do. You still walk through that door. You will still walk through that door. What do I see? I see greater days ahead. What do I see? I see victory. What do I see? I see triumph. What do I see? I see glory. What do I see? I see peace. What do I see? I see health. What do I see? I see deliverance. What do I see? I see redemption. The worst has already happened. And the greatest days are yet to come. Maybe you did, you've done several interviews. And every time you do these interviews, you're not cold. You're saying, what's wrong with me, Pastor. There's nothing wrong with you. Just believe the word tonight. Do you know God can open one door? One. And that door gives you things a thousand doors could not give you in two years. That's the power of redemption. That's the power of redemption. It's only in the face. I've always told people, it's only in, there is no book, there is no faith or religion in the world that has the opportunity of redemption of time. But he has spoken that I'll restore the years that were eaten by the cankerworm, by the caterpillar. He, he, he ha, it's only in the Bible where God not only can restore Restore everything that was eaten by the palmer worm and the canker worm and the caterpillar. He, he, he not only wants to restore what you lost, he also wants to give you the time to enjoy what you lost. If you lost 10 years in your work life, God can get that stage and add another 10 years of your existence and give you the life and strength and provide everything you could. I mean, he is the God who kept men for 900 years. In this body that pumps blood. With kidneys as yours. With a heart as yours. With a liver as yours. With eyes as yours. With the same oxygen you breathe in and the same blood. And he keeps a man in the body for 900 years. The man says, I had fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living you will see God's goodness. I said you'll see God's goodness. So I see a God 
who not only wants to restore you, but he also wants to give you the years and the time that you lost and greater doors are ahead of you than the doors that have shut on you. If he left you, God will get a better fellow. If she left you, God will bring a better man. That's the way God works. If that ka job, ka job, let me add on, that little small job left you. Let me watch you get a job that is going to shock everybody that is related to you. Let me watch you get a promotion that is going to shock everybody who knew you. In fact, I feel the Spirit of God tell me there's somebody watching me right now. Something is going to happen and those you went to school with you are not going to believe you're the same person that sat with them in school. Those who you've been playing with are not going to be able to define you. They will reach you and not believe that that's the fellow that they went with to school, that they ate food with, that they lived in the same community and vicinity with. Why? Because God wants to do things in your life that no man can define. A door can open on you and I mean Jesus was open to a realm and just after three days they could not identify him three why because of the glory that was on his life remember after that after he makes a public spectacle of them all and triumphing all Overall, the Bible says he's given a, a name that at the sound of that name, every knee bows of the things in the earth and under earth and in heaven. And every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He rises up in glory and he appears before some and they can't even identify the man that died three days ago. Not because his nose changed, but there was a glory in his life that changed. Not because his eyes changed, but there was a glory in his life that changed. May God do something that even your own relatives might bypass you without recognizing you. Not because they don't know your face, but the glory on your life will turn you into another man, into another woman, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those are the doors I'm believing God for. Some of you, they will not be able to define you by color because you'll be more than color. They will not be able to define you by, by, by education because you'll be more than books. They will not be able to define you by tradition because you'll be more than any culture. They will not be able to define you by language because you'll have idioms in the spirit that are bigger in articulation than any language has power to articulate. God wants to do something in your life where even your past will forget you. It will look at you and not be able to identify you. I said it's possible. He says, for all things are possible to him that believeth. Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? Now I want you to open your voice and pray with me as the choir comes and those of you that are in studio. Raise your voice. I want us to speak in tongues for one or two minutes and just get this thing into our spirit. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. Pray. You're the God of everything. No one like you. No one like you. Jesus, no one like you. No one like you. Is no one like you. No one like you. Father, no one like you. Master, you're the God of everything. No one like you. You're not a man. Shabra katara mandorobo satala baye. It's working. You're the God who opens doors. Who opens doors? No man can shut. Raba satara bayara la de 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 bo. Shara la la de 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 bo satara baya baba. No. Raba satala mandorobo sat. It is working. It is working. It is working. Those doors are opening. Sapatala Barebo. Opportunities are coming in the mighty name of Jesus. God helps you. He's
breaking through for you he's coming through for you he's helping your family he's getting that job for you he's getting that promotion for you he's shaking your ministry for the next level of glory he's elevating you oh he's lifting you up in the mighty name of jesus he upholds you signs miracles and wonders are working blind eyes are opening deaf ears are hearing the dumb are speaking cancers are living covid is living hiv is living where there was a loss god is gonna open for your prophet things are coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus if you've never given your life to Christ I want to give you an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior to receive him as your Lord and Savior now is the time, now is the day the Bible says there's no name by which men are saved in heaven or under earth or in earth but the name of Jesus is the name that was given just repeat these words after me say Lord Jesus I believe that you died for my sins and was raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You're born again. If you've made that prayer, please go on fanero.org slash salvation and send us your salvation testimony. I also want to send you some to help you understand what it means to be born again. Okay, you, you will ask for your email details on the website. Or you can call us on plus 256-200-99405. I repeat, it's plus 256-200-99405. And those of you that have received testimonies as well, go on for dog slash testimonies and send in your testimony. I'll read it. Or you can call us on plus 256-200-99405 as well. I hope to hear from you uh, on Sunday. Some of you see you in person. Of course, uh, uh, we have opened, it is a small announcement, we have opened an avenue of prayer for you. So if you have any prayer requests, we have uh, built uh, a prayer a provision for prayer requests on our um, website and on our application, our mobile application. But to get it on our mobile applications, you have to uh, update your settings. Uh, when you update the app, you go to about us section and click prayer requests. There are prayer requests and testimonies as well. For those of you who have prayer requests, instead of, instead of sending them on our phones, uh, you can send them online and every morning I'll be checking those prayer requests and praying for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope to see you 
God bless you. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manifest.